It was just one of many state-sponsored acts of violence in Cairo over the past few days. An angry mob attacked a car trying to bring food and medical supplies to protesters in Tahrir Square. What sets this apart is the car's driver and owner is one of the leading voices of the Egyptian uprising because of his Twitter page. Until yesterday, he was known only by the derogatory moniker Sand Monkey. But now, for the first time, because of the assault, he's going public with his real name. 29-year-old Mahmoud Salem grew up in Egypt and graduated from Northeastern University in Boston. He joins us tonight by phone from Cairo. Mahmoud, when your car was attacked by Mubarak supporters near Tahrir Square, what did you do? I found five police officers on a corner. So I stopped the car and I begged for their help. And they took our cell phones and they took my uh, car keys. And then they basically started inciting uh, the crowd against them. They started calling us Asians and saboteurs, and uh, American and Israeli Asians. And they uh, started asking people to attack us and attack the car. It was basically like a zombie movie scene. They, they managed to get like a hundred of those people surrounding my car, all of them wanting to kill us because they think we're uh, spies. These protests are by and large peaceful from the side of those who want to get rid of Mubarak, but they also don't seem to have any particular leader. Is there one leader that you look to who has emerged over the course of this week? Uh, here's what's happening. This is not a revolution that actually requires a leader. This was something that a call on Facebook launched and people managed to like, do themselves. People, people who took a very simple set of demands that aren't politicized and aren't ideological. They're simple demands demanding accountability and democracy and rights for the people. So this is an interesting revolution because everybody who's there is not there following someone. They're there by their own accord. This is a revolution of two, three million individuals making the decision to do to brave unbelievable pressures in order to have a better future for their children. This has been a remarkable revolution to watch precisely for that reason. But as you go farther down the road in terms of negotiating a resolution, in I terms agree, of... I agree. I agree. No, no, no. Absolutely. And we have, uh, like, the people, people have figured out the solution for that. One of us is Wael Ghunayn, who is the Google uh, Amina manager for, the, for, for Google, basically. The marketing manager. Mm -hmm. for Google, and he has been uh, arrested. And it was rumored that he was one of the person who has actually started the call for the protest. And the protesters, in order to call the... Uh, and he has been basically kidnapped and missing for, like, about a week, almost, by the police. We don't know where he is. And what the people in Tahir said, that if the government wants to negotiate with someone, uh, the person to represent the people will be Wael Zanin. And this way, having them actually face the fact that uh, they have arrested them. But a lot of people are saying it is, it is time for the group to elect leaders, but that would require us to actually be able to like, meet and function and socialize and you know, establish ourselves in committee and such things. And it's not exactly like the conditions for us to do this are safe. How do you understand the role of the military right now? Vice President Suleiman, do, do the protesters trust him? Do they trust the military at large? Uh, the Egyptian military have always had a, a favorable position in the hearts of all Egyptians. Okay, and Omar Suleiman, uh, by far, is a respected and capable leader in his own accord. Uh, what's happening right now with the military is that it's actually functioning as a safety valve. People uh, trust them while they don't trust the police and the police attack them, and the military are being respectful. But <clears throat> the, the issue is... We don't know basically which side the military is on. The military has been neutral so far, but it's also been part of the regime. Now that you are, you are no longer going to be anonymous, everybody is going to know your name. You had been uh, incredibly influential. Tens of thousands of people read, read your blog posts and your tweets. Are you going to be worried about your safety? Uh, you, don't, you don't participate in those protests and realize that you, know, you might actually get hurt, but I've already gotten hurt. You know, I've already been beaten up 35 minutes ever. I, I, I don't, literally, it's not like they, they weren't protecting the car and the car is now busted. There is no car anymore. Right. They took everything. Right. So uh, during this week, I got beaten up by the phones. I got tear gas. I got live ammunition shot at me. You know, and then I got attacked and almost lynched by angry mobs. So 
I don't know uh, what else I can be scared of. I think they could, like, throw me in jail or something, but I don't know. Uh, uh, there's nothing left anymore. What?